here's the deal. My Chapel Trust owns this. We've held this thing for so long, waiting for this deal to happen. And here it is, DuPont completing the $4 billion spin-off of its electronics division this morning. It's Cunity, and it's officially replacing the Eastman Chemical bye-bye in the S&P 500 today. Joining us now, fresh from ringing the opening bell, is Cunity CEO John Kemp. John, congratulations. This is a very important deal for people looking for a actually a new way to play all the stuff we talk about all the time. Thank you, Jim. It's a pleasure to be here today. So, John, fill us in about how much, what percentage of your business is truly connected to what we now call the data center, but to advance semis and to all the things that make it so that we uh, have artificial intelligence that we wouldn't otherwise. Yeah, thanks, Jim. So, Cunity really is one of the largest and broadest pure play solutions providers across the semiconductor and electronics value chain. We're built on a really strong foundation of about 50 years of innovation and technology leadership. Today, about 15% of our sales are really connected to um, AI data centers and high performance computing, and we're proud to be making tomorrow's technologies possible. Now, but there also is a uh, terrific we like you for cell phone, for commu communications, internet and mobile. Uh, automation is robotics. I mean, it's not like the ones that are just, uh, that are non-AI are slow growth. You've got good growth in all these verticals. Yeah, we're, we're excited about, you know, certainly we're at the early days of the, you know, transformative growth trends in the modern economy, really connected, whether it's AI, high performance computing, advanced connectivity. One of the great things about Cunity is we sit at the intersection of those trends transformative trends that are starting to transform the modern economy, whether it's in data centers, autonomous driving, uh, factory automation and robotics, we're really well positioned to help power the chips that power the modern economy. One of the things that surprised me, there's a company called Integris, which is considered to be your comp, so to speak. You have higher margins, you have faster growth, and they sell at a much higher multiple. It would seem like that the opportunity for individuals or for institutions who are trying to figure out exactly how to get into this should say, you know what, I don't need in the other, the other guy that I've been buying or owning is not nearly as inexpensive as your stock. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, that's indicative of the interest that there are in companies that do the types of things that we're doing. We're there aren't a lot of companies that, that are providing materials into the semiconductor value chain. You know, Cunity, now Integris is one, but I think it, it just shows the, the broad interest that there are in companies that are differentiated and, and leading the industry in these types of uh, solutions. You have a huge business in China, and poor people get worried about it, but I've always admired you. You are a of China for China market. We should not be worried about China and the president, so to speak. Yeah, so look, uh, you know, we've had a, a strategy for decades now that's really kind of building out a global network that's anchored in a strong local presence. And so when you think about our business, we're everywhere the electronics business is located, whether that's the U.S., Japan, Taiwan, Korea, or China, that's where you will find Cunity. So we're proud to support the multinational companies who specify materials who happen to have manufacturing partners in China, but we're also proud to support our domestic local for local China customers customers as well, where we see opportunities to continue to win with offerings that kind of lead in performance and quality for those applications. Now, you do a lot of work, a lot of business, big clients, uh, Samsung, Taiwan Semi, and you do packaging. Now, there'll be people out there who say packaging, well, is that kind of like craft paper? No, you're talking about the highest end packaging, the true science. Can you explain to people that this is just not wrapping paper. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great question. Fundamentally, advanced packaging is really, um, I, I think about it as you're making chips smaller and smaller and smaller, and as you try and make them more powerful and you can't make them any smaller, you start to stack them almost like Lego blocks together, and, and you create power efficiencies and performance advantages by doing that, but you need really differentiated and specialized materials to make sure that as you stack all those chips together, whether they're, you know, the GPUs or the CPUs or all of the memory chips around it, that everything is going to function perfectly every single time. And that's that's where we come in, and that's where Cunity shines, is on the materials that have to be perfect every single time. We just had a discussion about wearables and the where wearables are going to be in a couple of years. Can you just talk about 
what's being made possible on that front and what it's going to allow wearables to do for you? Yeah, I, I think wearables are an exciting trend in the industry. One of the things that, that we look at is form factor. Form factors has to change. So when you think about wearables, whether that's a watch or eyeglasses, you know, those form factors change, which means the miniaturization of the electronic components it has to be done in order to enable those types of applications. And that for adjusting form factors and miniaturization is one of the real benefits of our portfolio because we've been kind of leading the industry with form factor innovations uh, in things like smartphones and wearables becomes the next evolution in that migration. Now, I do want to be careful. I know your relationship with the giant boundaries is good. There's a propensity for people who want to say, and you guys have a direct relationship with NVIDIA. I want to be sure that, that it's more indirect and not direct. I don't want to create more hype so, far, so more than, than there is. What is your relationship with NVIDIA? Look, I, when I think about it, you know, our, our direct customers and, and partnerships and conversations are with about 80% of the leading players in the semiconductor okay. industry. A lot of times the people we're selling direct materials to are going to be the people who are manufacturing the devices, but increasingly the OEMs are becoming more active in specifying the supply chains and working with partners kind of throughout that entire value chain. And that's what makes us kind of unique is that ability to have that um, unique view across the entire ecosystem system from chip fabrication all the way to final devices. Now, uh, uh, even as recently as uh, 18 months ago when I spoke to Ed Breen, who was the, at that point CEO of DuPont, I, it was a woe is me story because so much of your business was cell phone. And yet cell phone last week, we know from Apple, has had a big turn. Are you seeing the turn? So I, I think it's it, certainly any time we see um, uh, increases in demands from any of our end markets, it's great for us, whether it's consumer electronics, you know, data center obviously has been leading, but we've got a really diversified portfolio across a number of end markets from consumer devices uh, to data centers and high performance computing to automotive to broad industrial to communications infrastructure that allows us to be resilient in kind of any economic environment. Oh, well, John, I want to thank you. John Kemp is the CEO of CUNY Electronics. We are keeping our stock for the travel. Trust, and we're going to buy more because we think it is 15 points too inexpensive. Thank you. Terrific. Thank